Hi, and welcome to our presentation on our NAPTA Cracker Control Scheme. I'm here with my team, Sahiti Priya Kinapali, Peter Arnadov, and I'm Danny Lopez. The study of process control introduces how to handle dynamic operations of process systems. Processes typically do not operate at a true steady state. This is the case for the NAPTA cracking furnace. For our process, the main external variables are the fuel and air into the process, which are controlled by their respective valves. In turn, these variables directly relate to the rate of reaction, conversion, and profit of the system. The process is caused to deviate from the ideal set point by the ambient conditions. One of our key objectives is to address how to respond to these disturbances. The main objective of the project was to design, implement, and test multivariable and multi-loop control, control schemes such as feedback, feed forward, and cascade control to adapt the cracking furnace. The major objectives we aim to address were safe operation, environmental and equipment protection, smooth operation as in no plant shutdowns, and to maintain the quality of the cracker while maximizing profit. The reason we are focused on controlling the reactor temperature is because it is directly linked to the conversion and yield, which would indicate greater profit. The largest safety concern that we will address is the oxygen gas in the system. For this to work as intended, we must maintain excess oxygen above 9% to prevent the possibility of the fuel gas accumulating in the furnace, which would be a waste of fuel and could lead to an explosion. If the level of oxygen drops below 9%, it will cause an alarm to trigger and shut down the plant, an unwelcome loss of profit for the shutdown time. Initially, the simulation was run with no step changes to get a sense of how the system behaves when not under control. The next step was to identify the process transfer function, which was done by observing how the reaction temperature responded to a step change. It is important to note that for this step, the step change was made during a time when the primary disturbance, the ambient temperature, was small. This allowed us to graph the preceding reaction of the system based on our step change. From there, we cut the sample down to the window where the ambient temperature fluctuated the, le the least. This was from the time 250 to 400, during this period, we were able to determine the gain of the system, the time constant tau, and the delay using the 63% and 28% response method. After determining these values, we were able to combine them into a complete transfer function, which identifies how the reactor re temperature responds to a change in the fuel valve position, which we would then use to implement a feedback controller from the reactor temperature and the fuel valve. The first type of control that we implemented to control the reactor temperature was feedback control of the proportional integral derivative or PID type. Among other variables, the reactor temperature measurement is dependent on the amount of fuel fed to the furnace. So this measurement is compared to a set point of 800 degrees Fahrenheit, which is then results in the controller manipulating the fuel valve, which is normally 50% open. The three tuning methods we use to compare the parameters are tabulated on the right, where the obtained tuning constants and daily profits are quantified. The Dahlin 5% overshoot method resulted in the higher daily profit, which was found to be $21,980. Furthermore, this resulted in the least aggressive control, as can be shown in that controller gain has the smallest value. To further enhance the performance of the reactor temperature control scheme, we implemented feed forward control in addition to the direct feedback control. From the previous analysis, we discovered that the direct feedback control system alone was ineffective since the primary disturbances, in this case the ambient temperature, was occurring at a frequency which did not allow the system to settle down, namely given due to thunderstorms occurring and other so we had to identify two models by determining how a change in the disturbance variable affected the output. So initially we selected a time when there was a step change in the ambient temperature, 
and performed an identification test, which allowed us to obtain a transfer function for the load response. Second, we determined the transfer function of the process during a time when the disturbance was constant. And finally, these two were combined to get the design equation for a feed forward controller, which is listed to the right. The profit obtained with this control implementation is $22,820. And after fine tuning the controllers, we obtained $23,180. Next, Tahiti will go into more elaborate detail as to how we went about enhancing the profits and maintaining safe operation as well. In order to control the excess O2 at the set point, a ratio controller between the fuel flow and the airflow was implemented. The ratio of the airflow to the fuel flow is 10. The resulting profit was $25,740. However, the excess O2 crossed the minimum allowable value multiple times, which resulted in safety issues. Thus, the next objective is to control the excess O2. Two alternative control schemes were considered to control the excess O2. In the first alternative, the ratio control was replaced with the cascade control. The inner loop, PID controller 3 controls the airflow, while the outer loop controller, PID controller 4, controls the excess O2. The profit was $26,240. While the profit was higher, the oxygen dipped below the 9% allowed value multiple times during the day. The set point had to be raised to 10.65%, but even then, the issue remained and the oxygen still dipped below the 9% six times during the day. The second alternative was to implement a cascade loop to replace the existing feedback controller between the reactor temperature and fuel flow and the feed forward loop between the ambient temperature and the fuel valve. The inner loop controller, PID controller four, controlled the furnace temperature while the outer loop controller PID controller 5 controlled the reactor temperature. The profit was $25,070. The profit was actually lowered and the excess O2 resulted in the negatives. This was a very inefficient control scheme. After evaluating both alternatives, alternative 1 showed better control of the excess O2. Alternative 1 was combined with a ratio control where the ratio controller adjusted the position of the air valve based on the fuel flow to the airflow, which had a ratio of 1 over 10. The set point of the excess O2 had to be raised to 11.135%, which lowered the profit. The trade-off here was between the profit and the excess O2, but to ensure safe operation of the plant, the loss in profit was seen as acceptable. The final profit was $25,712.68. The objectives were met as profit was maximized and safety was not compromised. While occasional dips below 10% remained, the excess O2 never dipped below 9%. The outputs are presented here. The furnace temperature varies from the set point by plus or minus 5 degrees Fahrenheit, and the reactor temperature varies from the set point by plus or minus 3 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the control scheme will be demonstrated in simulator. Here is the control scheme for the naphtha cracker process. First, there is a feedback controller from the reactor temperature to the fuel valve. Then there is a feed forward temperature to control the ambient temperature by adjusting the fuel valve. Further down, there is a cascade control loop which controls the air valve based on the excess O2 and airflow, followed by a ratio control which also adjusts the air valve based on the flow of fuel and flow of air. After running the simulation, the profit is shown to be $25,712.58. Thank you for your time and listening to our presentation.